we're going to do today is we're going to look at the use case of using privilege remote access to access a, a bastion host that is locked down. It's restricted to only be accessed through privilege remote access, but will be used as the gateway to access other systems on the network. Um, and we'll be able to do that using external tools like Remote Desktop Manager. But truthfully, you know, in the, within this demo, you're going to see it really could be any Remote Desktop Management tool. Um, and the users will be able to use that, those external tools, like they normally would. So very first thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get logged in as my demo user into the Privileged Remote Access environment. Uh, first thing that you'll see here, it's going to pop me and ask me for my MFA token. Once I pass that, I'm going to get logged into the console and I just have access to this Bastion group. Now, in this example, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're in that total PASM set up to where we have uh, both privilege remote access and password safe at play. Privilege remote access is going to be our session manager. Uh, and we also have um, password safe as the backend credential manager. There is an integration between the two. Uh, we certainly can, you know, start you know, sessions you know, this way. But the particular use case, we're going to actually get connected to this Windows 11 box that's um, just a VM in my environment. We're getting connected with an RDP user. This user does not have any rights to make changes to this tools box. And that tools box is um, very locked down. We're restricting what can be done on that machine. Um, and the tools are already kind of loaded there and um, by security for the engineers. Once I get connected here, uh, we're going to see that I'm already, already logged into the password safe tool. I already have Remote Desktop Manager up. So here's the use case. And I'll go ahead and get logged out. Password safe to really show this to you. And I'm going to get logged in as my dbastion user. Now, for the purpose of the demo, I'm just using a you know, local account here. But truthfully, I think this be an Azure AD account. It could be an on-prem AD account. We could use SAML. You know, whatever makes the most sense. Um, but again, Bastion host, I'm locked down. You know, um, I'm, I already had an MFA to get here. Um, you know, apply however you know many security controls that you need uh, to satisfy um, requirements. But these are the. It's essentially the same credential that I'm going to check out here, and that credential can be used um, on multiple different machines. All those connections are already set up. Um, I do have this access policy restricted to where I can only um, retrieve this password here. Um, has to come from the Bastion host. So um, I have to be connected here to use it here. And the only way I can actually connect to those machines using firewall rules is from this host. So the Windows folder here, I've got my credential, bastion, shield.int, my domain, and I'm just going to update the password here, update the Windows entry, and we're going to open the folder. It's going to prompt me, hey, you sure you really want to open up those four connections? And then away we go. Now, all of these sessions, because we're using you know an external tool, uh, Pretty much almost all of these allow you to do this, but you can adjust whatever your screen sizing is. If you want to use smart sizing, um, if you want to adjust the, the quality here, 100% um, you can do that. And you just update it on each endpoint. All right, so now that I've shown you the, the user you know, functionality, um, leveraging both privilege remote access and password safe, that Bastion host type functionality where we're able to get a user connected to a controlled uh, endpoint. And then from that controlled endpoint, the user can grab the physical password and start sessions um, 
using whatever external tool from that host. I'm going to show you the controls that we have in place. We'll start with password safe. So I'm going to get logged in as a administrator user so I can show you the kind of the back end of how we're doing all the controls. All right, the very first place that we're going to go is I'm going to show you the access policy itself. So inside my access policy, I have a bastion access policy. And then the big changes here uh, that I have is um, I have location restrictions. If I click on this, what this means is the users are able to, you know, if they have a valid account, they'll be able to log into password safe itself. However, any pass or any credential associated with this access policy, the Bastion access policy, it's going to have to be on a host the, where we're allowing the connection to come through. And if I go to my manage address groups here, you actually see the IPs that are here. So I've got two. One is the actual Bastion um, host itself. Uh, the other is my password safe um, resource broker or UVM. Um, and in that case, I'm allowing the credential to be used um, in the PRA integration, as well as from the Bastion host itself. So that's how we're controlling it uh, from a password safe perspective. The next piece would showing you how we're controlling uh, what tools can be used from Privilege Remote Access. All right. So I'm logged into the Privilege Remote Access console as an administrative user. And what we're looking at is the session policy. So I have this particular session policy assigned to the endpoint. Um, you can assign session policies via endpoint or user group, whatever makes the most sense. To, you know, from an administrative overhead perspective. With it being Bastion hosts, you know, probably makes most sense just to do it on the endpoints that, you're, that you have, um, but certainly you can do it either way. Uh, so what we can do is we can restrict what applications that the user can use, um, either, you know, providing just an allow list or a deny list. And really, you know, it depends on what all you want them to be able to do here. But, you know, if we certainly only want them to be able to log into the browser and we want it to be the, you know, our secure browser of choice, we could add that in. And you can add that in either by the file name or the hash. <coughs> uh, either way, um, you know, we, we, we add them in here. You know, it doesn't really matter, but kind of take as, as secure of an approach that you want to take. If you want to take more of like a, an allow list versus a block list, you can do that. Uh, and certainly if we want, you know, even more restrictions in place uh, or, you know, allows the users to be able to run some things with, you know, admin rights on the endpoint, you know, uh, at that point, you know, we do have a privilege management solution that can, um, that can handle those types of requests. But from here, we do have some mild capabilities within our session management tool as to what we can allow or block for our end users that we want to have you know, a lockdown experience for.